Hello everybody and welcome to this A-Level Chemistry exam question walkthrough video. We are focusing on the atomic structure topic from year one of A-Level Chemistry and we're looking at multiple choice questions. If you want to have a go at these questions yourself, you can download them in the description. There are 10 questions and you should aim to be taking about 10 to 12 minutes to do them. Then when you watch my video, you'll hear me thinking out loud and writing down my reasoning in blue and then the answers that are going to get you the marks, they will be in green. This question is about the time of flight mass spectrometer and we're analyzing molecule X. It is being ionized using electrospray ionization. Two really important facts about electrospray ionization. First of all, the molecule that is being ionized has to be in the gas phase. What that means then is that we can rule out A and C because X is in the liquid phase in both of those. The second important fact about electrospray ionization is that protons are gained during the process. So you can see that in B, it is an electron that is being gained, so that's wrong. And in D, a proton is being gained, and we can see that because of the H plus ion here. So D is the correct answer. This question is about electron configurations, and we're focusing on vanadium, which is a D-block element. Vanadium has got 23 protons normally, and therefore 23 electrons. However, because it's a 2 plus ion, it has lost 2 electrons, because electrons are negative. If we count up the electrons in each of these options, we find out that the first two have both got 21, but C and D have got 23 and 25, so they are no good and we can rule those two out. Then we have to remember that the D block elements lose their S electrons before their D electrons, and so B is wrong because it should have lost those 4S electrons first, and that means that A is the correct answer because it still has all of its 3D electrons. This question is about subatomic particles and element symbols. We are asked which of our options has one more proton and two more neutrons than this phosphorus atom here. Well, this phosphorus atom with its atomic number of 15 has got 15 protons and 31 minus 15 gives us 16 neutrons. So that means that our correct answer needs to have 16 protons and 18 neutrons. So this means that it will have an atomic number of 16, which is all of them, and a mass number of 34. So we can rule out A and C because their mass numbers are too low. To pick between B and D, we need to look at the atomic number of 16. Well, if 15 as an atomic number is phosphorus, 16 must be a totally new element. So B is wrong and D is the correct answer. This question is about ionization energies, and we're shown successive ionization energies for element Z. This is the first ionization energy, the second ionization energy a bit bigger, then the third, then the fourth. Then we have a huge leap up to the fifth ionization energy. That means we have gone in an energy level. And because of that, we know that there are four electrons in the outer energy level that were similarly easy to remove. Four outer energy level electrons means that we're looking for something in group four. This means that we can rule out phosphorus and nitrogen, which are both in group five. And now we have to differentiate between carbon and silicon. Well, carbon has an atomic number of six, which means it only has six electrons and so can't have seven ionization energies. And so it is wrong and silicon is the correct answer. This question is about subatomic particles, specifically neutrons. We're asked which of these atoms has the smallest number of neutrons. Well, you work out neutrons by doing mass number minus the atomic number. Hydrogen has an atomic number of one, so three take away one gives A two neutrons. Helium has an atomic number of two, so for B we do four take away two, which is again two neutrons. 
C has a heavier isotope of helium, which has still got the atomic number of two. So five take away two gives us three neutrons this time. And for D, lithium has an atomic number of three. So four take away three gives us one neutron, which means that D is the correct answer because D has the smallest number of neutrons. This question is about subatomic particles. Specifically, we're being asked which of our four options has a greater number of protons than it has neutrons. So we need to look at the periodic table and find out the atomic structures of all of these elements, which I'm adding in now. The atomic number is the number of protons an atom has got. So the numbers that we've just written in are our proton numbers. To calculate the number of neutrons, we need to take the mass number and then minus the atomic number from it. And so 234 minus 92 gives us 142 neutrons, very definitely bigger than 92. For lithium, 6 minus 3 is 3, so our protons and neutrons are the same. For helium, 3 minus 2 is 1, so our neutrons are fewer than our protons, and so C is the correct answer. We don't even need to work out hydrogen. This question is about electron arrangement. We've been asked which of our options does not have a pair of S electrons in its highest filled electron energy subshell. So hydrogen has got one electron, so normally it would be 1s1, but because it's negatively charged, it must have gained an electron, so it is 1s2. That's a pair. Magnesium has got 12 electrons, and it finishes in 3s2. Again, that's a pair. Phosphorus has got 15 electrons. Because it is 3+, plus, it must have lost 3 electrons, which brings it down to 12 electrons, which is the same as magnesium as an atom. So that means it will have the same electron arrangement, and so that will also finish in 3s2. And again, that's a pair. Argon, therefore, has to be the correct answer, and it's a noble gas. Its outer shell electrons are in the 3p subshell. This question is asking us about the time of flight mass spectrometry, and it's asking us which of the four statements is correct. The first one, the current in the detector is proportional to the ion abundance. Well, that is the correct answer. The greater the rate that the ions hit the detector, the quicker those electrons are transferred to those ions, and therefore the bigger the current is flowing. So the abundance is proportional to the current. In a test, we'd move on now, but just to falsify the last three, it says sample particles gain electrons to form positive ions. They don't. They gain protons to form positive ions, or they lose electrons. C says that particles are detected in order of kinetic energy. No, they all have the same kinetic energy. And D says they're accelerated by a magnetic field, it's an electric field. This question is about the number of electrons in particular species. We're asked which of our four options has the same number of electrons as this radical shown here. Now, radicals have unpaired electrons, which is what that dot is representing on the left-hand side. And it's why the formula is unfamiliar. Carbon has got six electrons and hydrogen has got one, but there are three of them, so the radical has a total of nine electrons. Well, A has got six electrons from the carbon and two from those two hydrogen, so that's eight, so it's wrong. B has got six from the carbon, three from the three hydrogen. It's lost an electron because it's positive, and so that takes us to eight again, so also wrong. CH3 has got six and three, and it's gained one, so that's 10, so that's wrong, and D is the correct answer because it's got six and four. We've lost one because it's positive, so nine. This question is about electron configurations, but it's also about ionic compounds. We've been told that element Q is forming a sulfate of the formula QSO4. Now, you need to remember that SO4 forms a negative ion. It is negative 2 minus. And that means that whatever Q is, it must be cancelling out the negative charge of the sulfate ion. So in other words, it must have a 2 plus charge. 
when atoms form ions, they lose the electrons in their outer energy level, the valence energy level, to become stable. And so that means that before they lose their electrons, they must have had two electrons in their outer shell in order for Q to become stable once it's lost two. Now, the only one with two in the outer shell is B. The others have got one or three in their outer shell. OK, that's all for this walkthrough video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.